Italy on such a rainy day. So before I enjoy the delicious food, Edmund Jung, CEO of Dog Asia Organization, will give a brief presentation on the launch of Dog Asia IDN domain first. Um, please feel free to ask questions if you have any. Please. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today, actually. And um, uh, as, mentioned, as Teresa mentioned, uh, one of the main things that we want to talk about is, is what is called IDNs, internationalized domain names. But at the same time, um, besides just talking about IDNs, I think um, if, if you may have uh, heard about a, a really big development on the Internet in the last uh, month or so, that's the what is called the new GTLD process, the new generic top-level domain, and so so I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that because one of the things that we are Dot Asia is also um, launching or announcing today is our support for these what is called new top-level domains. So. I'll, I'll start off with you know just explaining why you know what the impact is for for new top level domains and also what the impact is for Chinese Japanese and Korean what is called internationalized domain names especially to businesses and what they really mean to to businesses and you know uh, at the same time what we are doing here uh, at dot Asia uh, our organization so um, and also, just feel free to 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 you know jump out and and ask any questions as I go through. I'll spend a little bit of time, and then I'll, I'll try to leave time for food, of course, and uh, and also some questions. But if you have any clarification questions, feel free to just you know just shoot. So, what are what are top level domains? First of all, th these are these are .dot com or .dot net or .dot org or of course .dot asia. These are these are called top level domains. Today in the in the world, actually there are um, 200 and so, uh, including country code top level domains and what is called generic top level domains. And this is this is the kind of thing that we're talking about. And Dot Asia, of course, is one of them. Um, and you know, just to give this is. This might look a little bit technical, but don't be scared of it. Um, just to explain what the impact is and why it's why it's important. So essentially, what a user, when a user uses a domain name, it type in the domain in the browser. It actually go, comes back, uh, well, dot com something www dot something dot com. And that's called a domain name. And what we what we are doing is dot asia. So instead of using a dot com or dot whatever, dot asia is, is is the domain that we operate. And basically, on the internet, this is how it works. You know, you type in a domain name, and it, it actually the server comes back with what is called an IP address. And one of the interesting things about that is that both of these, what is called identifiers, this is the domain name, they have to be unique. Think about it. If you type in www.yahoo.com, you expect to go to that place and nothing, no, nowhere else. You know, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, and that's, that's, that's the reason, and you think about it, therefore, it requires a central body to, to control to make sure that this is unique. And this part has to be unique because you know uh, that's uh, that that's how the internet works. And today, you know, a, an organization called ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Names and Numbers, is the international body that controls this this part of the domain. The you know dot the last part of the dot whether 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 it's dot com, dot hk, dot cn, or dot asia. And for dot asia, we have to go through a process. Uh, a, a, a a process to 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 apply much like you know applying for the Olympics or for, for example you know go through an international body and this is this is where it is and before you know in the academic days this is the guy this is guy is called John Pastel this is the guy that sort of played God for a period of time on the internet uh, or you know he really controlled the uniqueness of those domain name systems he was the guy to go to if you wanted .hk or .asia for example but unfortunately um, he actually died in 1998 and that's that that came the creation of this international body for for the domain names and numbers and in terms of domain names I just you know, just quickly, um, you have to understand that there's what is called the country code domains. So the dot China, cn for China, dot jp for Japan, dot kr for Korea, and such. And then there is what is called the generic top-level domains. 
And this part is what we're talking about. So if it's in the early days, we only had .com, .net, and .org, and then some other things. In 2001, seven more was, was added. There's .info, .biz, there's actually .museum. You may not have heard of them, but they were added in 2001 as an experiment. The experiment was expanded in 2004, and that's when .asia came into being. .asia was added uh, through what is called the experimental round in 2004 and added to, to the internet. And today, what, the, the, what we're talking about is that last month, this organization has announced a program to expand this tremendously. So we're not talking, right now there are about 20 of these generic top level domains. But in the future, you may be looking at thousands or hundreds, you know. And so, so beyond dot Asia could be dot music, dot blog, dot whatever. That's the significance. And, you know, moving from the guy that, you know, one guy was managing the whole internet to the whole world trying to, to, to work on this, uh, the biggest difference is that it's, uh, it's commercial impact um, and why it is, you know, why, why it is a big news. One of the reasons is think about this. If, if today you run .com, .com currently has about 100 million domain name re registered, and domain names are charged on a per year basis. Think about the commercial, rep you know, uh, the, the implications. And that is why there's a huge gold rush that is going to happen in the next couple of years on the internet. Dot Asia is sort of one of the first wave of these, what is called new generic top level domains. And in the future, there could be dot anything. And it could also be in any type of language. And that's, that's the, the part. So, so it could be dot music in Chinese, like dot yamlok, or you know, there, it, it could be anything that you, you can imagine. And that opens up, that opens up, opens up opportunities for companies around Asia and around the world to register the d names. Because in the past, dot com names, for example, they were bought and sold in, 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 in high, high values. But because of it, it must be unique, there's only one domain. But now there could be a you know, music.web and also a web.music. So in the future, it's, it's going to be very interesting how the internet develops. This is going to be a big uh, development for, for the internet in the next couple of years. And for us, um, uh, just going a little bit back to what Dot Asia does is, um, if you look at the, the, the sort of the road that Dot Asia took, um, Dot Asia was first conceptualized in year 2000. It took us a long period of time going through what, what was called the ICANN process to eventually, uh, to eventually signing the contract with with ICANN and launching uh, Dot Asia in 2007 and 2008. So it took us not eight or nine years to really make Dot Asia happen. And one of the things that we are offering to, to, um, to sort of to Asia today is that we are taking this experience and providing it to uh, potential G GTLD applicants into the future. You know, for example, um, a dot music. If somebody, if somebody is interested in you know, app applying for dot music as a generic TLD registry, dot Asia is going to provide that support and and, and support those applicants. And that's one of the things that that dot Asia is is looking at doing. And I think one of the uh, more more important things is is our ability to to support in terms of our experience going through the process and our experience in terms of the the policies that needs to be behind it. You look at a little bit of the history of why Dot Asia took so long. One of the issues that that a lot of people are, are you know uh, raised when Dot Asia was going through the process was. Um, Okay, so when Dot Asia is launched, what happens? Uh, the biggest, uh, the, the the group of people who have the biggest issues are what, what basically the brand owners. Think about that. They are, for example, your Nike. When Dot Asia is launched, 
you were worried that you know, somebody else might register Nike.Asia and might be infringing on your trademark and doing something that well, maybe you don't want on Nike.Asia. Not only Nike, think about governments. If somebody registers Beijing.Asia. Is that going to be, a, you know, is that going to be an issue? Uh, how do you do that? So one of the main things that really um, uh, we need to look into was how to prepare for the launch of the .Asia domain. And, and one of the things is what is called um, the, the sunrise process. And it's really one of the things that, that uh, uh, .Asia was, was very successful in doing in the last few years is to make sure that .Asia was introduced into the internet with very little disruption uh, for brand owners and for internet users. And one of the things that we've learned is that it's, it's, it's really important for a sunrise process. And what is, what is really uh, a, a sunrise process is uh, essentially a, a priority registration period. Um, and and that, is, that is the kind of thing that, that we're really talking about is that uh, uh, before they, any .asia domain name can be registered, there is a process for trademark owners and business regist registered businesses to register the name ahead of time. And you know, that, that is sort of what we call uh, the sunrise process. And the reason why it is a, a, a important is also because you know, to, to protect people's uh, trademark, protect people's intellectual property. But one of the things that we also found out is that it's kind of interesting because it's not, trademarks are not unique. When you think about it, um, for example, United, the, the airline or United, other things, United Artists, uh, United, there are lots of Uniteds around in, in, the, ro in the world. So how do you, how, how you deal with that? What's the process for which, you know, uh, to, to deal with those situations as we launch? You know, a few examples for, um, in, in, today we're talking about internationalized domain names, so, so Chinese, Japanese, Korean domains. And so one, one of the examples is, for example, uh, Bank of China. And you can, you can see that Bank of China in Chinese, you know, the four characters for Bank of China in Chinese is actually the same as another bank that, that exists in Japan. You know, there happens to be a Chunkoku uh, 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 prefecture in Japan that has another bank that actually uses the same characters. So, the process is to ensure that they have an equal opportunity to, to register uh, their domains and you know, to, to avoid uh, uh, infringements. And there are other issues as well. You know, there's, you know, that Bank of China is one of the examples. Apple, of course, you know, no matter if it's in Chinese or Japanese or, 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 or English, there are many different Apple brands. And so, you know, an Apple.Asia uh, domain, that's, that represents a, a, an issue to be, to be dealt with. And for .Asia, we have a fairly complete process, which, which we call the Sunrise process. And it's currently running from, uh, it started in May 11th, and it's going to be uh, closing in two weeks' time, in July uh, 25th. So that's one of the process. And after which, after the sunrise, then it's open for everyone to, to basically what we call land rush. It's open to, you know, all the, I guess, the best names around uh, for Dot Asia will be open in August uh, 2nd. That's, that's what we call the land rush. We also have a program to, uh, to, to sort of uh, uh, complement what is called the sunrise program, which is called the uh, Pioneer Domains Program. That's one of the programs that is balancing the sunrise because when, when we first launched, um, the trademark owners were very worried, but then also there were free speech uh, you know, uh, people and also freedom of expression uh, concerns and legitimate business concerns which says, wait a minute, even if you have a trademark, there needs to be a balance. And the Pioneer Domains Program is one of those such balance so that if you put a business plan behind a domain, you know, let's say you want to create a, something that does not infringe Nike's uh, trademark and use Nike.Asia. You can utilize the Pioneer Domains program to, to apply for which. 
and um, there, there's a process. Another uh, aspect for the Pioneer program is the uh, is celebrities. One of the things that we, we found out is that in in protection of trademarks, there is a lot of um, there, there's a whole process for Sunrise. However, a lot of celebrities around um, they don't they they don't really have the chance because they might not have a trademark. Uh, you know. If a lot of, of course, the, the bigger stars, maybe Jackie Chan, might have a trademark, but for the smaller celebrities, they often get, they often are targets uh, for what is called cyber squatting, or you know, uh, uh, somebody registering the names and sometimes selling it back to them on a high price. So you know, these are these. This one of the the main things that that we are doing right now is the the launch of. Uh, what is called uh, IDNs, internationalized domain names, and so Chinese, Japanese, and Korean domain names is is the uh, is is we, we are launching. And so one of the one of the um, uh, policies that we have put in place also, um, as I mentioned, you know, the the internet is going through this big change where instead of .dot Asia in the future, we will also be operating .dot Yazo or .dot Asia. Or Asia in, in the different languages, and that's part of the the impact which I, I which I uh, uh, introduced earlier on, which is what the internet is going to see. There will be new dot whatevers in, into the future, and, th and in terms of dot Asia, we are making a commitment also that if you register a Chinese dot ASIA, so Chinese dot Asia domain today then you automatically essentially get the, the Chinese full Chinese version and also for Japanese a full, full Japanese version. So these are um, an important aspect and uh, just to, to highlight that it is not about a, a translation but it is about the change of the top level domain. This is, this is the grandfather we were talking about. Another uh, aspect about uh, Chinese domain names that, that we have put put in place is for um, simplified and traditional Chinese. For those who, who understand Chinese, you would, un you would uh, uh, probably appreciate the, the, the efforts to make sure that as you register whether a simplified Chinese or traditional Chinese, both of which are actually uh, uh, reserved for the registrant. And this is some of the, the policies that we put in place. And similarly with Japanese kanji. But we come back to a, a question of what does it mean? You know, why, 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 uh, why does, why is it relevant? One of the things that people think, you know, people are are used to typing in English domain names today. So why bother? What's what's the use? Especially here in Hong Kong and everything. But just think about what these guys are doing on the internet, and think about search. In today, people how people navigate the internet is very much dominated by search. So. Do you still need a domain name? Now, here, here's one of the things that a lot of businesses uh, uh, ha have not found out yet, especially in Asia, and that is, if if you if you think about it, the search term and the domain name has a very tight correlation. What I'm talking about is that um, if you put into Google, for example, your your domain uh, a, a search term, and your domain name it matches those search terms then your, your website actually automatically ranks higher in Google. So that's, that makes a huge difference in terms of search engine optimization. So one of the things that, um, in terms of domain value, that the Asians t t tend to forget about is how, the, um, how, how, how search engine optimization and domain names really go hand in hand. And, and, and it becomes much more important when you think about the future where you know, we can have Chinese, Japanese, Korean domain names. And the biggest difference is because now you can actually catch the search terms. Because think about all the hundreds of millions of users in China, Japan, Korea. They are searching on the internet in their native language. They're definitely not searching in Chinese. Oh, I mean, they're not definitely searching in English. They're searching in their own language. So they're searching in, in Jap Japanese in Japan. They're searching in Korean in Korea and Chinese in, in China. And if you have a domain name, if a company has a domain name that is in that language and in that, 
in the terms that a search, you know, a, a user is searching for, your website actually ranks higher. And that's, that's the big difference. That's something that the US and European companies have started to realize with English domain names. But, and also, that's also the reason why it's driving the, the valuation for domain names to, you know, millions of dollars. And it's because of the search engine value, the search engine optimization value. And, you know, just think about all the searches that you do. If it matches your domain, it brings more traffic to your website. The other thing that, that people tend to forget is that there, there's this myth about um, having one domain name for one website. That's not the case anymore. A lot of businesses, successful businesses around the world, especially in US and Europe, they have a portfolio of domain names to drive traffic. Much like, you know, in the real world, you would have chain stores or franchisees that really catches traffic from around, you know, different different locations. The same thing happens on the internet by use, utilizing multiple domain names. And utilizing internationalized domain names is one of the uh, one of the one of the tools that that is really uh, making going to make a difference, and this is one of the things that that is not just um, not not just uh, uh, happening with .dot Asia. This is a trend. This is a a building development uh, around Asia and around the world as well. Today, you you may have already heard that there is uh, you know there, the .dot China .dot Hong Kong and dot Taiwan in Chinese. Those are those those have been launched late last year into this uh, early this year. And coming soon is Korea, Japan, Singapore, and there are many uh, Arabic region uh, uh, countries that have launched their domain name, their country code domain name in the, their own languages as well. In Russia, in Thailand, and in India, different Indic languages. This is a whole movement on the internet that you know uh, I'm talking about and this is happening this has been happening in the last you know uh, 6 to 12 months and it's going to make a huge difference on the internet and this is part of the things that that uh, sort of what what we're talking about and why we are selecting you know this time for dot asia to launch chinese and japanese korean uh, id and registrations and it comes back down to you know these guys these guys are going to change how the internet is being used and businesses around the internet, uh, businesses need to think about their strategy, how they brand themselves and how they set up different domain names and create uh, uh, their domains uh, uh, on online and, and IDNs is a big part of that and I think today uh, domain names are not valued as high in, in Hong Kong or around Asia as in US or Europe and one of the main reasons is because of the lack of realization of, of the search engine optimization value. That's going to change, as I mentioned. That's going to change when IDNs are being, being introduced, when, Chinese, when you can have Chinese, Japanese, Korean domain names. People can match that with search term and utilize it as a search engine optimization tool. And therefore, that's going to change the, the perceived value of domain names. Another thing is that you, you'll see the regular day brands uh, that you see on you know everywhere uh, 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 the native brands you can see them it, as domain names you can also see trend words or uh, slang or you know everyday phrases that can actually be used in domain names and that's going to change how people value domain names so I was talking about uh, search engine optimization just want to you know uh, go a little bit more deeper into the whole concept a lot of people, a lot of businesses actually don't know about this, and this is part of the uh, uh, um, in in the domain industry, especially in U.S. and Europe, is already very well sort of developed. In terms of search engine optimization, Google's ranking system, Google's ranking algorithm is actually actually 30% of that algorithm is based on your domain name which domain name you're using and how you're using the domain name. So selecting a domain name is extremely important if you want to create a footprint or create a, a presence and make sure that you are, you know, I guess at the top of the rank for Google. And in terms of domain names, there's also important aspects. You know, the domain name that you choose, if it matches what people are searching for, if people are searching for, I don't know, like sports shoes or, or gaming or uh, traveling, and your domain name contains that in the language they're looking for. 
that's going to create a kind of trust. That's going to create a, a, a better branding for people who are actually looking for uh, products online. And uh, one of the things that uh, if you look at, go into Google, this is, this, 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 is, this is the Google AdWord page. And if, you, if you're trying to buy today, if you want to rank, you know, sort of, if you want to buy a Google ad, um, you basically go into and, and, you, and you pay what, uh, whatever fee that particular, uh, that particular uh, uh, keyword is about. And it, the, in terms of the domain value, if the keyword costs more, the domain valuation actually costs, you know, costs more. And that's one of the reasons why um, you, you see huge, you know, high-level, uh, uh, high-priced domain sales. I mean, domains like Poker.com has gone multi, like, twenty-seven million dollars. There are million-dollar ones. You know, Tom.com actually back in two thousand was bought for you know uh, two two point five million dollars. This is the kind of thing that's happening, and it's this is this. I took this snapshot in two thousand seven, but it's you know it's happening every day. This is this is a website called DN Journal, and it is sort of like a second-hand market, secondary market for domain names, and and. To this this year, this is uh, year to date top sales, and you know this year domainname.com sold for a million dollars. There are many domains that are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars every day, and this is and a big reason for which is the is the domain uh, search engine optimization value that's driving what you know the domain business. You know, of course, that Asia for ourselves, we're also. Well positioned, and we're we're you know one of among the non dot com ones. We're at num you know this this year year to date one of the highest uh, 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 transacted uh, domain was Mortgage dot Asia at about twenty three about twenty four thousand dollars. But you know in in the past we have different uh, auction you know dot uh, Asia domains auctioned at different prices as well. One of the highest being Discover dot Asia, which went for over a hundred and and twelve thousand uh, dollars. But this is the, you know one of the reasons why is really you know as I mentioned again the search engine optimization value. So if you look at this particular domain. Um, media.asia, um, when you search for Media Asia, it ranks to the top. And this is what I'm talking about. If, if your search term matches with the domain name that you have, look, this is number one. And if you look at number two, it also has Media and Asia in the domain name. And that's a big part, as I mentioned, that's a big part of how, how Google uh, searches work. And this is the reason why uh, it, it's relevant. And so, so finally, I guess um, in terms of why it really matters, so why should businesses care? I'm sure most businesses have seen this, you know, m most users have seen this kind of uh, website. And what it is is that it, it's got a lot of links and, and ads on it. And these are the, you know, how, how there, there's a, the whole business of how these websites are making money. These websites are getting good domain names and ranking high on the search engines. And eventually, when you click on one of these links, they get basically a, a revenue per, per click. Instead of having them buy your domain name, you know, products or services that you're selling or, or campaigns that you're doing, buy that domain and instead of paying them to, to bring you the traffic. Another interesting thing that people um, forget and, and I think it's very important for thinking about internationalized domain names and how you invest into domain names is think about the pets.com story. I don't know whether you have heard of it, but at the height of the dot com boom back in 2000, pets.com was a huge, you know, was a was a huge failure if you will. It it grew up to a pretty big company and then it bankrupted. When they bankrupt, when the company went bankrupt, the one asset that was the most uh, you know, most valuable ended up not being their products, not being anything that they do, but their domain name. They eventually, you know, the domain name pets.com was worth much more than all the other other, other uh, assets that was left in the company. So, when you think about new top-level domains, when you think about the um, uh, uh, when you think about the the Chinese 
Japanese or Korean domain names. That's one of the things that, that is important is what is, you know, you think about the search engine value, think about the, the, the investment value because the domain name you invest in, you're putting money into or buying could be, you know, eventually worth, well, for unfortunately or, or fortunately could be worth more than your business. And, and that's, you know, just like real estate, you know, if you, a lot of businesses in Hong Kong I know, um, if you buy the piece of land that, that you're doing business on, eventually that piece of land might eventually, you know, that, that, that apartment or that store might actually be worth more than your business. And that's, that's happening in domain names as well. And I think that's going to make a difference. That's going to happen especially for uh, IDNs uh, in this region in Asia. So I, I guess just wrapping up, um, one of the key aspects when you look at uh, internationalized domain names, when you look at the value of Chinese, Japanese, Korean domain names, it's not only just whether it's being used today, but also the, the value for search engine optimization and how it relates to search engine optimization. Because they all cut your customers in China, in Japan, in Korea, they are searching in their language. They're searching in Google, in their search engines, with their own native language. And having a domain name in those languages with the search terms that matches the search terms of the users, that's going to make you, uh, uh, that's going to make your presence better and, and make your footprint larger. And that's, that's why IDNs are important. It's not only just about it's not only just about having a domain name for your website, but also a, a search engine optimization tool. And beyond that, it's, it, you know, one of the things that's important, of course, is brand protection. Um, and, and also, I mentioned about domain investment. Um, when, you, when you invest into a brand, when you invest into a domain name, think about it could end up being uh, a, a valuable asset for, for your company as well. And I think... Um, that sounded like a time's up, but uh, and it is actually. <laughs> and uh, um, so, so another thing, uh, as I mentioned, just wrapping up, the, the future is about more than .dot Asia. Today we're talking about .dot Asia. Today we're talking about uh, internationalized domain names in .dot Asia and the impact it is it has for businesses around Asia and and here in Hong Kong. But uh, as we go forward. Dot Asia is also going to be participating and supporting companies uh, in in the growth of the internet into the future, into the dot future, if you will, dot whatever, and in the different languages. And um, I uh, generally end my uh, presentations on on this slide. Um, dot Asia ourselves is actually a not-for-profit organization. So um, as we operate the Dot Asia domain and we have uh, the income comes from domain registrations of Dot Asia uh, domain names, um, all the income actually goes back into uh, community projects to, to support internet development in Asia. For example, we support the uh, One Laptop Per Child initiative that is sending laptops to, to rural villages around Asia in China, in Cambodia, and different areas. We're all, we also support the Creative Commons initiative. We have a Relief.Asia initiative to, to help support uh, uh, disaster uh, areas, build, rebuild and relief efforts. Uh, we have a youth volunteer program uh, that we support. We support open source software. We have a research and development fund, a grants fund that, that we give out grants to, to research uh, around Asia every year. We, have, uh, we work with the Hong Kong Social uh, Services Council uh, for, on a, what is called a digital inclusion uh, fund, uh, which funds uh, different projects uh, around the year. Uh, for example, uh, teaching the elderly to get online. You know, those are some of the things that that Dot Asia actually does. So every Dot Asia domain actually contributes to the internet development in Asia. And thank you.